What's going on guys? I'm back with another installation on the MP300. So today we're gonna to be talking differential locks. Now in particular, rear diff lock, mainly because the MP300s are so freaking awesome that they come with one from factory. There's very few models that don't have a rear diff lock from factory. So we're really lucky that we actually get that as an option because it is a massive, massive bonus, especially if you're into off-roading. Now, what we're gonna be doing as an installation today is we're going to be installing a product from RaceWise Australia. Now, RaceWise make this little kit, and what this, uh, what this kit does is it actually lets you use the differential lock in two-wheel drive and also in high four-wheel drive. So from factory, the MP300s only let you use the differential lock when you're in four low. Now, that isn't bad, it's, it's not terrible, but it is good to be able to use it in four high as well, especially if you're in a situation where you just need a bit more traction and you don't wanna be in low range. So it's great to have that option there using the RaceWise kit. It's a really good uh, harness kit, ready-made. All you need to do is wire it in following the instructions. So I'll show you how to do that today. Now, it also allows you to use it in two-wheel drive, as I said. This is great for people that are maybe backing in trailers or caravans and things like that where they really want to stop the wheels from spinning. Okay, so. I've set up a little bit of a thing here to try and demonstrate what a diff lock does. Now, what we've got going on is the transmission is in drive. So I've got this wheel off the ground, no traction. The other wheel is still firmly on the ground, so it does have grip. So as you can see, I can spin this wheel freely, whichever way I want to, it can spin. This is exactly the same in an off-road situation. If you're on an uneven surface, especially like maybe in a rut or something like that, this wheel can slip because it might be on dirt, sand, or a slippery mud patch or something like that. This wheel will spin because the open diff will send the power to the wheel with the least resistance on it. So this wheel's going to be getting all the power. It's gonna be spinning, it's gonna be spinning like crazy because you got your foot on the accelerator and you're trying to get out of a sticky situation. So it's gonna be spinning at a high RPM because it's getting sent majority of the power. The, the wheel that's on the ground that has grip won't be getting much power at all, not enough to move the vehicle forward. It'll just be getting enough to, for the diff to go, hold on, that wheel's got resistance, this wheel doesn't, so it sends it all over this side. What a diff lock does is exactly that. It locks the diff center in. in, in. It basically locks it in and sends a 50-50 split evenly of power that the engine's producing to each wheel. So both of these wheels will then be spinning roughly at an equal 50-50 split. So that wheel will be turning, the wheel that's got grip, and the wheel that might be in a soft sand or anything that's slippery surface will be spinning as well, but not super fast. It'll be spinning exactly the same speed as the other wheel as well. So what that means is it's going to pull you forward out of a sticky situation because the wheel with grip will still have momentum and will still keep turning. So that's what a diff lock does. It locks a diff center and sends even split of power to each wheel. So without it, you can see exactly why you wouldn't get grip off road and you might get hung up and stuck on an uneven or slippery surface. exactly where you need to get a set of lockers. Now, what this can also do for you, which is a massive benefit, is save your axles from breaking or possibly damaging other components. Now, what the diff lock does is it's locking those axles and spinning it at the same rate. So when this wheel does get traction, so let's say it's spinning up now, you know, and let's say that the front wheels get grip and pull you out of whatever sticky situation you're in, and then it grabs the surface when it gets grip. When, those, when everything moves forward, it grabs the surface and stops dead. Now, that shock is going to be sent through the axle to the diff center, okay? So this can break a bunch of various components on your diff if it's really in a bad situation, grabs a lot of grip at high RPM. So with a diff lock, that's not going to happen because again, it's that even split of power going to each wheel. So you can still run the risk of damaging things with a wheel that's off the ground and spinning. You do have to be careful and try and not put, just crawl out of situations if you can. Um, it's best not to get there in the first place. That's why diff lock is especially good because it will just keep the momentum going and the vehicle will just move forward at, at a comfortable pace. And it is also good to have one on the front. It is costly though to set a diff lock up. So it's great we get one on the rear from factory and on the front, if you can afford to get one, 
it's still worthwhile putting one on there because it will save things like your axle um, components and things like that, which do cop a lot of damage, your CVs. So um, that's pretty much what a diff lock does, guys. I'm not going to go fully technical drawings or anything on this one. If you want me to do that, I can, but this was just a bit of a basic explanation and demonstration of what a diff lock does. Now let's jump into the car and I'll show you how to activate the diff lock on a factory vehicle. So we're in the vehicle, guys. Now, I'm going to show you how to operate the rear diff lock and also the four-wheel drive system in the MP300. So what we've got here is your rear diff lock switch, and over here we've got the four-wheel drive selector. Now, you can't use the rear diff lock in four high or two-wheel drive. We can only use it in the four low position from factory, and that's what we're going to change today. We're going to allow you to use it in two-wheel drive and four high. So I generally put the transmission into the neutral position, uh, okay, just to select through the four-wheel drive selector. Now, that's four high. So on the dash, we'll see it illuminates the uh, four wheels. So the front wheels are illuminated. And then we've got the four low position. So you just have to push down and twist it around to get into four low. So now we're in the four low position. Uh, that means that the transfer case, the four-wheel drive transfer, is in the lowest reduction. So it means that the vehicle's going to travel at a lower speed, and it also means that more of the torque is going to be used, especially in off-road situations. This is good in uh, sticky situations, where you need to move slower and have the uh, vehicle pushing a lot of torque through the tires and really working. So we can now activate the diff lock. Now, the owner's manual uh, says that you can do the diff lock activation at any speed under seven kilometers per hour. So you can actually do it on the fly if you want to. The handbook says that that's okay. So it's completely up to you guys. I honestly usually come to a complete stop and then do all my uh, full drive selecting and diff lock selecting then. But if you need to, if you're in a situation, just make sure you're below seven kilometers per hour and you can engage it. Anyway, so when you're in full low, you can press on the diff lock switch. Now on the dash, that diff lock switch will start flashing and it will only be usable uh, once it stops flashing. So when it's when it's basically a solid light on the dash, that means that it's engaged. If it's flashing, it's still trying to engage. Now, if you're finding that it's flashing and it's not moving away from the flashing position, uh, you can just drive around, reverse forward, things like that to try and get it to engage. Sometimes it just takes a little bit to get it going. So in my case, it's still flashing now, so I'm just gonna drive forward a little bit and try and get it to uh, go solid. And there we go. It's gone to a solid light so we know that it's on. And when it's on, uh, the ABS is no longer activated and the traction control is also turned off. So now the diffs are locked in and that's what we we're talking about before where now it's going to be producing an even 50-50 split to both rear wheels and uh, that's going to send the drive that you need to the wheel that needs the traction most. So that's how to activate the diff lock in a factory vehicle. Now I'm going to show you how to use this diff lock switch in two wheel drive and four high as well, guys. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, guys, so the first thing you wanna do is pop your bonnet latch, get your bonnet up and then get yourself underneath the engine bay. What we need to do is we need to disconnect this earth from the battery. We are gonna be dealing with live wires on this one, guys, so we need to make sure the battery is disconnected and the easiest way to do that is removing the earth. Okay, so step one, we need to remove the glove box. Underneath here, we have the diff lock switch wiring harness, which we need to get to. So you just need to drop this down. This is just a clip out situation. You've probably seen it in my other videos. Basically, you just push one side out and then the other side will follow with a little bit of wiggling like that and it comes out nice and easy. So up here, we've got the diff lock control box. Now, the plug going into it, this one here, is what we need to remove. That plug is going to have all the wires that we need to be splicing into. So go ahead and push down on the bottom clip and pull the plug out. Take this um, take this around out, see if we can get a little bit more room. So we've got, uh, we've got the screws on the outside. I think there's a total of five screws. So I'd probably take that out. It's pretty easy, just take those screws out and the whole thing comes away. Probably do that just to uh, get a bit more access in there and even see if there's something up higher on this wire that's holding it in place that we can maybe remove just for now. Alrighty, so we've taken the surround off now and I've just taken the screw, let's get a little bit more angle. I've just taken the screw out of the control box up the top here and that control box just lifts out the whole piece. And now we can have access to the main loom up inside there. Now there's a plastic clip that's holding that loom in place. I'm just gonna remove that plastic clip. We'll put it back in after, but just for now, see if we can get a little bit more length out of this wire. All right, that 
is way better. Whew. It's given us all of this cable now to work with, so that's gonna make the job a lot easier um, to try and splice into these wires with a lot more wire to work with. So there's a bit of a sleeve around the outside of those wires, so I'm just gonna grab a blade. Uh, I think we've got one over here. We're just gonna grab a blade so we can cut that away so we can get access to the wires. So we've got the plastic sleeve away from the cabling, so now we can get access to everything that we need and splice in nice and easily. So the instruction manual will refer to the plug in this position. Now it will refer to the numbering uh, starting from the right there on the yellow wire all the way through. So counting across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is the other side there with the blue wire on the left hand side. And then you start at nine up on the top side there where the red wire is. Uh, so that's the way that it numbers through the instruction manual and the way that we're going to have to refer to things. The plug does have numbers on it, but just disregard those because it's not referring to anything there. Then we need to set up our area, okay? So what I've done here is I've put down a piece of cardboard because we are going to be working with solder, unless you use um, some splicing clips, it's up to you guys. I, look, I prefer to solder. You can use three-way splicing clips if you like to, but yeah, that's up to you. Uh, then we've got some tape here, soldering iron, wire strippers, and a blade as well. Everyone's gonna have their own technique, so I'll leave this up to you if you've got something else that you like to do. Um, basically, grab yourself a pair of wire strippers. Now, these will have a certain sizing written on them for each uh, wire size, so just make sure you don't go anything too small, otherwise you will cut the wire in half. <laughs> so, what you need to do is grab your wire, put them in the wire strippers wherever you want to start the strip, and just uh, push down and twist the wire around just to put a nice even cut. So about that much there. That's where the first one is, that's where the second one is. Just do that, twist around, or twist the wire strippers around, whatever you can do when you're in the car. And then grab yourself a blade. And you just wanna put a slice down between the two cuts that you just made. Now, we should be able to remove this pretty damn easily. Use the old teeth to get in there. One exposed wire in the center. So what we'll do is we'll get the race wires loom and we'll feed it in between this. So we're gonna to wanna to pinch a little hole roughly in the middle of these wires. Open it up like that. So there's a hole and then we're gonna feed the race wires loom through the middle, twist them around together, solder them up and then tape it together and she'll be done. Okay, so now we're ready to start splicing wires in. Uh, now what we need to do is read the instruction manual and it says here, connect red wire, which is on the race wires loom, to pin nine on the plug here, which is the battery supply wire, okay? And it's red also. So that's pretty easy, we can see it's this one here, but to do this, you just use the, the yellow wire here, like we said before, that's your starting wire. So that's number one. So if you count to pin nine, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the red one up here is number nine. So go ahead and put your splice in, like I showed you before, wherever you choose to on this, I'm going to go probably just about here, halfway up the cable, and we'll splice it in. So as you guys can see, I've stripped that uh, center of that wire. So I'll just go ahead and use the blade to try and separate the wires about halfway. Obviously these are very small gauge wires, so things are a little bit trickier, but just try and separate them about halfway, open things up like that there. So there's a hole in the center. Now what you can do is you can grab your red wire on your race wires loom. So we've got the red wire there now from the race wires loom and grab the red wire that we just stripped. Feed this one through the center like that. Oh, get these ones out of the way so you guys can see. So through the center of the hole like that. And then all you want to do is separate the race wire harness wires like that and then you can start twisting them around so you can go that way and then this one can go the opposite way maybe okay so you can start twisting them around a bit like that this is just going to mean that it's got really good connection and grip as well so 
just give it a good squeeze, make sure it's all together. And that is a really good splice that isn't going to cause you any dramas down the track, guys. So that is the first wire now soldered and spliced in. I haven't taped it up yet, but I have run it down in line with the other wire. So when we do tape it up, it's a nice line. It's not a T, uh, so it keeps things nice and clean. I'm not sure if I'm going to run it down or up yet, so I'm just going to tape them up once I'm finished. Now, the next wire that we need to do, as the instruction manual says, connect blue wire, so that's race wires wiring, the blue one, uh, to pin seven, ignition supply. That is a light blue wire. So, okay, so this one here is the blue wire on the race wires loom, and then we need to get this plug. We need to count seven from the yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and we've got that one there, the light blue wire, uh, second from the left. So you can really manipulate these wires sort of however you want them to be to make it easier for you. So can pull it out like that, separate it from the rest of the loom so you can work on it nicely. Okay guys, so the next one that we need to do is on the race wires loom, the black wire. And then on here, the pin number 10 wire on the Nissan loom, which is also black, and that's for the earth supply. So you guys might have noticed that I've had a quick change out of soldering irons. I had the electric one in here before, um, but um, Old Faithful has given up the ghost. It wasn't firing up today, so Sean's let me borrow his uh, gas-powered one. And let me tell you, this will be a next investment for me. This thing is cranking. These are the duck's guts compared to the old electric one, guys. And less cables hanging around as well, so less stuff to get in the way while you're trying to do what you need to do. Alrighty, guys. So we're up to the first wire that we need to actually cut in half. So this isn't a splice. We're actually going to take this yellow wire, which is pin one. Now, that is the diff lock positive, okay? So we're going to cut that one halfway up the wire here, and then we're going to get on the race wires loom, the yellow, solid yellow wire, and the yellow black, the one there with the black trace, we're gonna get those wires, and they're going to go in either side of this uh, factory Nissan yellow wire. So about halfway up is fine. So that one there, just before you cut it, make sure that it is pin one, which we can see there, pin number one, and it is yellow. So that one gets cut in half. And there's no going back. No, just joking. You can reconnect any wire that you cut. Don't stress. Okay, now you need to get yourself a um, pair of wire strippers. Uh, you can do this manually as well if you don't have uh, automatic ones. So just uh, strip that yellow wire back. So that's one end done. And then do the same on the other end that's cut. Okay. Okay, so we need to get the solid yellow wire on the race wires loom. And we need to connect that to the loom side of the Nissan cut, which is this top one here. Just make sure you double check yourself before you put everything together. Now, I'm going to, you can connect these however you want to. Um, you can solder them, you can use uh, bullet terminals, you can use pin terminal connectors, you can use a plug, you can do whatever you want. Um, but I'm just going to be using these uh, connectors here. So one, one wire goes into this side and the other one goes, goes into that side. Then you use a crimping tool to crimp the whole thing down and uh, that squashes them together and creates a signal between the two. So that wire there is the one that we need. And then just uh, feed in one side of the wire into this connecting terminal and then grab the other side and put it in like that, okay? And then we're gonna to wanna to get our crimping tool and crimp that one down so that the two connect together. Okay, so neither of those wires are going anywhere. It's a very strong connection. Okay, now we've gotta do the yellow black to the plug side of the yellow cut. So these two are gonna to go together next, same way. And I forgot to put my heat shrink on. Don't know how many times I've like, yes, I'm gonna put heat shrink on, and then you forget to put it on, you connect the wires. It happens all the time. So, killing my OCD that I didn't get the other one on there, but that's right, we've got two other wires that we need to do because we've got one more cut that we need to do 
on this setup for those purple wires that are left on the race wires loom. So, cut pin two, number two pin, purple. Uh, that's a diff solenoid negative, so it's right next to the positive, makes sense. Uh, so that's the purple wire, pin number two. Now, what we need to do is we need to connect the purple wire from the race wires loom to the loom side of the cut on the Nissan harness. And then we need to connect the purple white wire on the race wires loom to the plug side of the cut. So much like the yellow one, you just need to follow the instructions and connect them up to the corresponding wires after you've done the cut. Right here guys, so that's all done now. So we've got the solid purple wire going to the loom side of the cut, and then we've got the purple white trace going down to the plug side of the cut. And I've just put the connectors on there and haven't used heat shrink like I was saying before. They don't really need it, so I'm just gonna not use anything on there. Once it's all taped back up, we'll be perfectly fine. So we've got the three soldered wires up the back here. They need to be taped up with electrical tape individually. You can't have them touching so make sure you do those individually then we've got our two wires that we've cut and the connectors have been put in that's there now on the race wires loom you've got two relays they can just be um, put up behind the paneling here somewhere and zip tied up out of the way they don't need to go anywhere special uh, so let's go ahead and get all this neatened up again so as I said tape those soldered wires up separately and then grab the um, original plastic sheathing that went around it, put it around all the wires, and then just use some electrical tape around it and make it all clean and neaten it all up, guys. And then we'll move on to the next step of fitting the switch. Rightio, so once you're happy with your wiring and everything, it's all covered in some conduit or some tape or whatever you can do, uh, we need to put the main harness clip back in. So just push all that harness back up and clip it back into place. Once you've done that, we need to take the diff lock control box that was removed before, and that one just goes back up into the same spot, just like that, and then take the screw that you removed, Phillips head screw, and put that one back into place to secure it. Once the control box is back in, take the original plug and clip it back into place. So time to fit the diff lock switch. Now for anyone other than STX owners, you can fit the switch in this location or somewhere around here if you like to. You can really put it wherever you want to, but this is a good location that's close by and easy to get to, so you can take up one of these panels. Uh, if you own an STX model, you can find your own position, but they've given you enough length in the loom to, uh, to install it into this position in here. Rightio, so to get this switch in, we need to get the center console uh, paneling off. So we, that's just a clip away setup, but we need to get the shifter knob off so that we can lift it away once we've unclipped it. So pull down on this silver piece there, and there's a little split pin here, which you just need to push forward on, and that comes away. Okay, and then the shifter knob just comes straight off. So that's all the pieces off now. Okay, now I've also connected up the earth back onto the battery, just so that I can shift it down into um, neutral maybe at the moment, because that gives us a bit more room to work with. So now what we need to do is just get underneath this panel and it's just clipped in. So just need to basically work your way forward with it from the back, unclipping it as you go. Now I believe that this panel here, the front panel just pulls forward. Okay, one more clip. So just like everything on the Navaras, it's all just clips. <laughs> it's just clips that hold this thing together. There's very few screws and stuff. So um, that exposes everything there. Now we've got a couple of uh, screws on the back here that uh, hold the setup together. So I've removed that panel. So now what we need to do is just get a flat blade screwdriver into it wherever you're looking to install it. So that's the right way up. So we want to put it into this one here. Okay, so that's unclipped. And now we can remove that piece. So that's just a blanking cap. So you can take the race wires diff lock switch, you can unplug it. So you don't need the plug on, the, you don't need the um, plug to be connected. Feed it through the back here to the front switch panel. Okay, so now we've run the wire behind here and it's coming out through the front now. There it is, there's a the plug. Okay, so now we need to install the switch into the panel. So that's just exactly how you think it would be. Basically make sure it's the right way up and just pop it in and press back until it clips into place, and there we go.
So that's everything back in place. We've got the factory plastics back on, the two switches are in there. This is factory, this is the new one. Now there is a green wire on here for the illumination on the new switch, guys. So that illumination will illuminate the writing on the switch so you know what it says at night time and things like that. It's optional, you don't have to have it if you don't want to, but I am going to wire it in so I can see the switch at night. Now, just so you know, if you don't do the illumination wire, when you press it and it's on, it will still have the LED down the bottom that shows you when it's on. That will still be there whether or not you wire in this uh, this green wire, the illumination wire. So no stress there, but this is completely up to you. So I'm going to tee it into the factory plug like it says in the instruction manual. Now the factory um, illumination wire should be the blue one on this plug. I'm just going to test it and make sure that it does have a power supply to it when it needs to. Now all I'm going to do to test to make sure I've got the right uh, wire, that blue one, is just put this wire in the pin and there we go, it lights up. So I've got the ignition on with the lights on and I've just put that wire against the blue pin and you can see that it's illuminating the new switch. So we know that's the right wire. So it's definitely the blue one, guys. So if you tee into that one, you're gonna be all sweet. You might be thinking to yourself, why didn't I just connect the green wire straight to the blue wire and take it out of this plug entirely? Well, you can do that. You definitely can rob the blue wire from here, the illumination wire, and just connect it directly to the green wire and not do the splicing like I've done here. But I'm going to be leaving the original switch in the dash here. So I'm gonna be leaving the switch there and it's gonna be exposed in the front like it would normally. And I'm running the new switch right next to it. Now you don't have to do that. You can take out the factory switch, tape it up and leave it behind this area here. It does need to stay plugged in though. If you don't have it plugged in, it will register a code, an error code, and it will, the, basically the dash will tell you and there will be error codes on the ECU. Um, anyway guys, I'm gonna carry on with soldering and then we're gonna put this all back together and move on to cleaning up the rest of the wiring underneath the glove box area and test this bad boy out. So there's not a lot hanging out, just a little join between the two. And now that is done, guys. Um, time to put everything back together, I guess. Okay guys, so now you've done that diff lock switch, now I've just come back in here and tidied up some of this wiring. Uh, so there's the two relays I've tucked up into there. I put a zip tie around the main harness to hold it into place as well, just these wires down here. So that's looking good as gold guys, it's not going anywhere. This bracket's back on and uh, now we can put the surround back in and the whole glove box back in. And that's this area then finished and we can put it to the test and make sure it all works. So you can see what I'm saying now I'm about leaving the factory switch in place as well as the new one from RaceWise. So RaceWise 1 is there on the left and the original one's on the right. Now, there's no real harm in leaving that factory on in there. You know what? It's kind of a good thing. I mean, if something was to happen and the, I couldn't use the RaceWise switch, it is a bit of a fail-safe having that original one still there because, you know what? You can still use that switch in 4-low like you could from factory. It's still usable. It doesn't mean now that it's not functionable. Uh, it still works. So... Having it there isn't a bad thing. I mean, I know not to use it. I know that the new race wires switch there on the left-hand side is the override switch. That's now the new one. Uh, that means I can activate it in two-wheel drive, four high and four low. So they both work um, and uh, yeah, it's up to you guys. If you wanna leave it there or not, it's completely up to you. Alrighty, let's get stuck into uh, how this thing works. So turn the ignition on. So the car is on, we are in neutral, and we're in two-wheel drive. You can see there's a little four-wheel drive symbol, only the rear wheels are illuminated. And the switch is definitely in the two-wheel drive position. So there we are, we're in neutral, two-wheel drive. All we need to do to activate the diff lock is press that button. And ta-da, we are in two-wheel drive with the diff lock on. So the diff lock's on, and we're just gonna drive over this little obstacle here off-road. I'm gonna show you how the wheels don't slip on the back. And we're just going over it now. And that has just 
breezed over it. Now we've had a bit of rain out here lately, as you can see, nice big mud puddle there. So normally going over something like that without the diff lock in, you'd feel the wheels starting to try and spin on you to get traction and, and then one will start slipping with the diff lock in. It was super effortless to get over that little berm there. Basically, it just felt like I had to do very minimal pedal work on the accelerator pedal. There was just grip the whole time and it pulled it straight over nice and easy. It's exactly what a diff lock does, guys. It keeps the grip on the ground and pushes you forward. So this product now enables you to use the feature of the vehicle properly and in all circumstances, guys, doesn't matter what you're doing with the vehicle, you can get the best traction out of the rear end now. Alrighty, that is an absolute wrap on the diff lock switch from RaceWise installation into the MP300, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it took me about an hour and a half to complete the job all in all. So definitely something you can knock out at home in a day, no worries at all, guys. Now, for a couple of bucks, this loom is supplied by RaceWise. So give Chris a call at RaceWise Auto Electrics. He's an absolute legend, guys. For a couple of bucks, you can get this loom posted to your door and installed in your Navara using this video. No problems at all. Now, we can use the diff lock in two-wheel drive, four high and four low now. So there is absolutely zero lockout and there's no speed lockout either. Now, I know there are some limitations from factory and they say that they put them there for a reason, but to be perfectly honest with you, there's no problem with using the diff lock in most situations. It's not really going to harm anything uh, unless you're on the tarmac where the wheels can't slip if they need to. Definitely don't use it on the tarmac. Um, avoid that at all costs, guys. You don't need it anyway. So. Uh, but in most cases, even on a dirt road, if you want to have the diff lock in so that it feels a little bit more traction on the road and things like that, no worries at all. The only thing is though, when you do have the diff lock in, obviously both wheels are turning at the same rate. So when you're turning corners, it will feel like there's a little bit more restriction on turning that corner um, and things like that. So it's up to you, but if you want to use it, it's safe to use. That's what I'm trying to get at guys. It's not a problem. And I think Nissan really make it more of a worry than what it actually is. Anyway, guys, um, really enjoyed making this video for you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to find more of the Shed Session videos, you can find them on my uh, YouTube page. You can subscribe there as well, guys. Now, I did put a post up on the Modified MP300 page recently about getting together as a group and going and doing some wheeling out in the bush for the Victorian members. Now, we are still on COVID restrictions at the moment. Absolute pain in the ass, guys. I'm dying to get out in the bush and put this thing to the test. So. I will be getting a group together as soon as we can get out in the bush in numbers, guys. So um, stay tuned for that one. If you're interested, uh, just go find that comment on the uh, Facebook page, Modified MP300s, and drop your interest in there. And I'll basically create a big messenger group once it's all uh, once it's all good to go. And we'll make sure we get everyone together and do a bit of a meet and greet and some wheeling. I'll bring the camera and uh, we'll get your rigs on, on camera as well and do some videoing. Now, if the numbers get too big, we might have to split it across a couple of days. Um, you know, maybe on one weekend and then another weekend with another group, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. It does look like there's a fair bit of interest, which is awesome. I'm looking forward to getting to meet you guys. Seems like there's a lot of Victorian members, which is wicked. So um, once again, guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you did, make sure you drop it a thumbs up for me and uh, drop any comments you have down in the comments section. I love a chat, guys. So feel free to ask me anything. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, guys, you'll get updated with all of my content as it rolls out. So I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.